that. You ain't got no business doing all this old heavy work. Well, I say, I've been cleaning stalls and pitching hay since before you was born. Yeah, well, maybe it's time you was taking a break, huh? <laughs> uh, Charlie will be back in a minute. Hey, I'm, I'm afraid he uh, ain't found time yet to order that new harness that your father Oh, wanted. that's all right, Miss Annie. I can come back later and pick that up. Surefire money making deals, did you? Like that post hole digger that did everything except dig. No, <laughs> sir. No, sir. That was foolishness. Wait till you see this. This is a pure quill. I can sell them for $10 a piece, maybe more, thousands of them. 99% profit. That's a, that's a stirrup, ain't it, Charlie? Well, not a stirrup, it's the stirrup. That's, that's the kind of them Eastern dudes wear on them pancake saddles. Feel it. No slip. Guaranteed to hold the boot. Silver plated. Guaranteed silver plated iron. Not wood like ours. Guess how much it's going to cost me. Well, I ain't got no way of knowing it. Well, go on, guess. Well, I don't know, Charlie. I... How much are they going to cost, Charlie? Fifty cents a piece. Fifties. How much money have you given them so far? Who said I give them anything? <laughs> uh, this calls for a celebration, horse, and the drinks are on me. We'll be back directly, I think. I don't want you doing any heavy lifting while we're gone. Just leave everything where it is. I'll straighten it up when I get back. You always do, Charlie. Now, mind you, don't forget dinner. And, horse, I'm expecting you. Miss Annie, I'd love to, but I've got to get back. Don't you say no. I've got the nicest peach pie waiting for you. Don't go on it, Miss Annie. You got the... You got the most convincing way arguing I ever heard. <laughs> Good, I'll see you later. You know, horse, I didn't let Annie in on everything. These females ain't got too good a head for finance. But what would you say if I could get the franchise on that stirrup for every state west of the Mississippi? Oh, Charlie, they gonna they gonna give you that for nothing? Well, they're next door to nothing. Hundred dollars, and I got that much tucked away. How many horses do you think's in the state of Nevada alone? A million, two million, at ten dollars a piece? <laughs> That's why I say things never look better, horse. Eh? <laughs> This old black kennel, surrounded by his warriors, over a hundred of them. What did you do, Charlie? Did you fight them? <laughs> fight them? No, no, no. I would have riled them up. No, sir. No, sir. I rigged me up a white flag. I walked out there. No, in any minute, one of them savages might run me clean through with a lance. And I says, Black kennel? I know you boys is hungry. I know it. But you're not going to get no grub fighting for it. Here. And then a lot of other palaver. All an engine, of course. <laughs> and, uh, well, anyway, I ended up trading an old slab-sided beef for two of the prettiest pinto ponies you ever seen in your life. The general told me afterwards, he says, what I done probably saved the whole settlement from being burnt clean to the ground. They give you a medal, Charlie? No. 
But I got something a lot better. I traded them two pintos to the general for a half dozen draft horses. And that was the foundation of my first fortune. <laughs> when did all this happen, Charlie? Uh, Christmas time, December. What? This was Kansas territory? That's what I said. You better get your time straight. Because the Cheyennes had already gone south by then. <laughs> You calling me a liar, Sonny? Well, the 7th Cavalry was my outfit. I was there. <clears throat> I asked you. You calling me a liar? Well, uh, well maybe I got a little mixed up myself. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you did. <laughs> yeah, young whippersnapper. Let that be a lesson to you. All right, everybody to the bar. Drinks are on old Charlie. You have nothing to do with that. No, thank you, Charlie. I'm mad at me and you better be heading for home. Miss Anna's gonna skin us alive. Well, Mr. Connors, would you mind if I sat down a minute? Well, buddy, we just fixed the leave. Oh, sit down, sit down. We got lots of time. Not Mr. Connors. Folks call me Charlie. Well, I was just listening to your stories, and well, you must be a real rich man with all them deals you got going, huh? <laughs> I do all right. Lord's been good to me. What's your name, honey? Hey, Barker, sir. Billy Barker. Where are you from, Billy? Oh, uh, well, all over. I'm just fixing to go down to Arizona now. Mm. Show you a little strap, Captain. Oh, no, no, sir. I ain't been looking for no handouts. I, I just looking for a job and thought you might need a little help somewhere. Well, well, you come around the barn tomorrow morning. We'll see what we can do. Yes, sir. I'll do that, sir. Bruno! <laughs> I seem to run off without my cash. Yeah, no, 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 this is my party. Put that on my bill, Bruno. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks, Hoss. See you tomorrow, boys. Hoss, you, uh, you go on in. I'm going down to the barn for a while. Charlie, Miss Andy's waiting supper for us. I know, but I got to get at that paperwork. A lot of paperwork connected with setting up a big deal, you know. Yeah. Charlie, if I was you, Charlie, I'd, I'd give that stirrup thing a whole bunch of thought before I invest any money in it. Well, don't you worry, Hoss. I'll get that hundred back and a hundred times over. Tell Annie I'll be along after a while. Yeah, I'll tell her, Charlie. Charlie's very hungry. He's down there working with that stirrup thing. Here, let me get that. Let me get it. Oh, thanks. I got it. Another one of them and my arms are ready to drop off. You ain't got your kitchen cloak yet, huh? Charlie's going to do that for me one of these days. Sure he is. What does that mean? Well, I mean, I know Charlie, Miss Annie. I... Do you? Well, I mean, I mean, we're friends, you know, like... What do you know about him? No, he's a, a nice old man that likes to buy drinks for everybody and tell stories. And go around pretending that he's something that he's not. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. What story did he tell in the saloon? What well, wasn't important, Miss Annie, just told a story about the Cheyenne and the beef. Oh, nothing, you know. <laughs> well, why don't I just tell you what really happened? There was Indians, all right. There was Cheyennes. There was a whole tribe. And Black Kettle was their chief. And there was a beef. That cow was all that we had between us and starvation. I'll never forget it. It was when our first baby died of fever. And I had it. I was down with it. And Charlie had it. And that's when these people came along. Oh, they were pathetic. They were the most forlorn, starved-looking bunch of Cheyenne. 
Their babies was just crying from hunger. And Charlie came into me where I was laying sick, and he said, I'm sorry, Annie, but they needed it worse than we do. He had given them our milk cow. There's all kinds of heroes in this world, Hoss. All kinds. You understand? Yes, I do. <laughs> Charlie, do you know that he traded a sound horse for a broken-down old ox yoke because that farmer needed a horse to plow his ground or he'd have starved? We didn't need an ox yoke. We didn't even have an ox. And this decoration, this broken down coffee grinder, he gave Mel Fletcher $10 for this because Mel had sickness in his family. I tell you, this house is just filled with junk. These are Charlie's medals. He doesn't think they're worth anything. But I do. Why don't you go and fetch Charlie and tell him supper's ready? Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. Who is it? Old guy, uh, Misa, Billy Barker. Oh. I'll be with you in just a minute here. Got something to finish first. Uh, yeah, well, I'm sort of in a hurry. Uh, your, your friend, the uh, big fella, is he around here somewhere, is he? Horse? Uh, he's over at my house. If I know horse, he's still eating. Well, I didn't expect to see you till tomorrow morning. And I suppose the fella's got to have some place to sleep, huh? You hungry? You bet your sweet life I am, old man. But I ain't gonna be much longer, am I? I mean, it just doesn't seem right to me for an old man like you to have all that money, and, and I ain't got none at all. What, what are you talking about? What money? Well, I heard you tell your friend that you got some money hid around here somewhere, and I want it. I got no money hid. Look, I heard you tell your friend that you got a hundred dollars. Now, you're going to tell me where it is, and you're going to tell me right now. Please, that's all I got left it. That's all my wife and me's got left in this world, son. Well, now, you tell me where you got that money hid, or the next time you open your mouth, you're going to be chewing on this. I, I'll get it for you.
Howdy, Hoss. Hi, Roy. Glad I found you at home. I'm going over to Carson City, and I brought that deposition statement of yours by the sign. Fine. You take a good look at it, and... If it's all right, you can sign it right there in the bottom. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine, Roy. You got a pencil? Yeah. Let me use you for a desk. All righty. I knew I seen a wanted poster on that Billy Barker somewhere. Yeah? Look at this. He's wanted up in Miller's Falls for stealing the horse. Ain't much of a reward, but you may as well put in for it. I'll tell you what, Roy, why don't you... Why don't you just give it to old Charlie? I got an idea he and, he and Miss Annie could use it. Well, that's up to you, if that's the way you want it. Yeah, let's do it that way. You, uh, plan on holding an inquest? No, I think the facts speak for themselves, Hoss. You might drop by the office, though, uh, say, day after tomorrow, and in case the coroner wants to ask any questions or anything, huh? Be happy to. R Roy. Yeah. About that reward, let's just keep that a little secret between you and me, all right? That will do. Goodbye, boy. How do you? Thank you for coming by, Hoss. Yeah. I tell you folks, you'd never believe it if I was to tell you the truth. But I will tell you this. A lesser man than old Charlie never been able to face up to him. Yeah, that's I right. give up trying to get him off that soapbox, because to hear him tell it, he's Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, and Wild Bill Hickok all rolled into one. <laughs> yeah. Well, but he's harmless, Roy. I reckon if it takes no more than that to make a man happy, the least me and you can do is go along with it. Huh? You're right about that. See you, Roy. Yeah. He had that cold, killer gleam in his eye. Well, he has his pistol in his hand when he comes in. And he threatened me with it. I dared him to shoot. I said, you pull that trigger and you'll have this whole town down on you in the flicker of an eyelash. Well, he paused there for a minute while he tried to stare me down. Finally, he had to avert his gaze. And in that second, I started to make my play. But I give him credit. He was quick. I don't need no gun for you, old man, he says. I'll just cut your gizzard out. And he makes a lunge for me. And I sidestepped and let him go on by. How'd, how'd he do that, old man? I don't. Well, was he all crouched down at you? It all happened so fast, I couldn't. Pretty quick, was he? Why, faster than greed lightning. What kind of a knife did he use? Well, it was a wicked-looking thing. Spanish. Like that? Who are you, boy? We're Billy Barker's brothers, old man. What do you want? <laughs> boy, I suppose we'd want old timer. Just thought maybe we'd even up the score a little bit until we got a look at you and heard you talk. Now I don't know as we're big enough. Real ferocious looking, ain't he? You get out of here. Leave him alone. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. <laughs> we got us a regular old pair of mountain lions here, don't we? I think you two boys better move on. Oh, well, uh, we better move on then, brother. Yeah. You're standing in our way there. I ain't intending on moving. No. Uh, I ask you peaceful like. No, no, beat it. These boys giving you trouble, Hoss? No, 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 no trouble, Sheriff. These fellas are just leaving, wasn't you, fellas? Oh, yes, yes, sir. No trouble, Sheriff. Come on, Jones. Uh, we'll see you around, old timer. Uh, it's a good thing you showed up, Sheriff. I was starting to get mad. Yeah. Hey, Hoss, if them boys do give you any trouble, you let me know now, you hear? Yeah. Oh, I ain't even gonna give nobody no trouble. There's just a lot of talk. Hoss and I gotta handle them with one hand. <laughs> I don't doubt that, Charlie. By the way, there is a hundred dollars in reward money coming to you. That boy Billy was wanted. <laughs> I think so. A hundred dollars. I figured that boy for a hard case the first time I ever seen him. <laughs> Wait till the boy is here about this down the saloon, eh? Yeah, yeah. Charlie, you got a minute I'd like to talk to you. Sure, come on in. How are you? Good. 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 Good.
I'll tell you something. Things are sure looking up. They've never been better. You know how much money we've taken in so far? Let me show you. Charlie. Huh? Charlie, you know, the truth is going out, Charlie. You've got to know that. What do you mean, the truth? Charlie, what I mean is, you can't just go on telling people that you killed Billy Barker. I mean, when when he died by accident. That, that's the plain truth. Accident? Why, he come at me with that knife. He come at me all over the place. Charlie. He thought he had me scared. When he found out different. Come right down to it, he wasn't so tough as he might have been. I'd have handled his kind before. They used to laugh at old Charlie. They did. But now they got to listen when he talks. Charlie. Yeah, oh, sir. I uh, got something out back I want to do. I wonder if you'd kind of look after things here for a little while, eh? Where's Charlie? Hi, Miss Annie. Well, he, he's on the grill. What? Good. I need to talk to you. I've been talking to Roy about them Barkers. They killed a man over in Miller Falls last year. He insulted their sister, they said, and then they provoked him into a fight and shot him dead. Nobody did anything about it. Self-defense. Well, Miss Annie, I guarantee you they ain't gonna hurt Charlie. Oh, no? Well, see, Charlie didn't have nothing to do with killing Billy Barker. Well, I know he didn't. You know? I... <laughs> Oh, you forget. I've been married to Charlie for 30 years. Yeah. Then you know what he's got to do, don't you? You really want him to stand up in front of this whole town and tell him that he's a liar and a fake? Miss Annie, Dad, Bernie, I, I know it, it ain't gonna be easy, but there ain't no other way around it. Well, that'd just kill him, that's all. I don't mean the outside kind of killing that would put him in his grave. I mean he would shrivel up inside, and that's the worst kind of death. That's the death of a soul. There is another way. I got a little money put by. I've been saving it. I don't think he knows about it. It ain't much, but I think it's enough. I want you to tell Charlie that you need him to go away on business for the Ponderosa. Maybe Montana, he'd like that. Something real important that'd keep him for several weeks. You think you could do that, Hoss? I reckon I could come up with some kind of a... But would he do it? Well, I, I could try to persuade him. When do you want me to talk to him? Well, I... I, I don't know, but I, I could let you know. Look, Miss Annie, don't you worry about nothing. Charlie's gonna be all right. Hoss, you're... You're a real good friend. <gasps> Hello, Hoss. Like a beer? Hi, uh, Bruno. No, thanks. Have you seen the Parker boys? They've been around? They're in the back room. They They've been uh, hitting a bottle kind of heavy. You take care. Thanks, bro. Now well, we got company. Well, sure we do. Come right in. Don't be bashful, Cartwright. Here, have yourself a drink. No thanks, Hold on. I want to talk to you. Now we sort of figured on that. You sober enough to listen to me and remember what I'm going to tell you? I got a mind like a bear trap, friend. Once it takes a grip, it holds on. 
sorry about your brother. I got brothers of my own. But you got this thing all wrong. You see, Billy was trying to rob the livery stable, and there was a fight, and he fell on his own knife. It looks like you're going to owe me. Now, just hold on. You're not finished yet. Are you finished? No, I ain't. You see, your brother had knocked old Charlie out. He was unconscious, cold. He didn't even see the fight. Didn't know nothing about it. And I don't want you hurting him. Anybody say anything about hurting that old man, brother? You hear anything like that? Oh, I didn't hear anything like that. I... Maybe that old man might have to sweat a little bit, but... Uh... Now, look here. Like I told you, old Charlie didn't know nothing about it. And I want you to leave him alone. Oh, come on. You ain't gonna say you did it. You ain't gonna say that. That's right. Your brother's fight was with me. <laughs> well, pay me up, brother. <laughs> I heard just won me bet. <laughs> George here said somebody would come along and try to take the old man's place. Now, hold right, on, this. But I'll talk. Now I'll fight with the old man. You do well to keep that in your head. <laughs> well, where did you get that? And that Hope family come in last night, didn't there any money for feed, Joe? So they gave you the cradle. That little girl outgrowed it, so I figured maybe the Stevens could use it for their new. You mind? No. I didn't think you did. Now, what was that for? Oh, nothing in particular. <laughs> Charlie, I just had a long talk with Hawes. Oh, what about? Well, it seems that the Ponderosa has got something big doing up in Montana. Only they haven't got anybody to handle it for them. Oh? Yeah. He was wondering if, if you'd be interested in taking care of it for him. It's a big deal, Charlie. Big deal. Big deal? He didn't mention her. <clears throat> I see. And how long is this job supposed to take? Long enough for the barkers to get tired of hanging around? Charlie, be reasonable. Annie, I told you not to worry. I'll take care of things. Charlie, I know you're not afraid of anything, but Roy Coffee is an old The friend. answer is still no, Annie. I'm not going to run to the sheriff because of a couple of saddle bumps. Now, what would the people of this town think if Charlie? I... Charlie? Miss Annie? Hoss? Charlie, I was uh, just going to go over and get a beer. Would you care to join me? I think that's a great idea. You can get them other ideas out of your head, Annie. I'll be right back. Today, Charlie. Well, it's a great day, and that's a fact. You might as well draw three tall ones there, Bruno. Sam, you know, that reminds me. Did I ever tell you about the... Mrs. Hank. Fine, Charlie, fine. Well, I believe we need another bottle. Ah, better days, Austin. <laughs> Did we tell you about that time down in Natchez when I run into old man Rainer's? Yeah, yeah, Charlie, you, you told me about that. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, maybe I did. I'll tell you one I'd like for you to tell me again, Charlie. 
Tell me about that fight you had with Billy Parker. Well, you was there, you seen it. What, what do you mean, tell you about it? I mean, tell it to me all the way through. I want to hear it all. <laughs> no use boring you with that again. I, it just happened, that's all. I think There's... you told me that he came at you with a gun first, right? Well, yeah. Pistol. And you took it away from him, right? No, I didn't. I, he, he dropped it, and I says to him, there's no use coming to me with that thing. You better... So he, he dropped it. How come the sheriff never did find it there on the floor? <laughs> come on now, horse. How do I know what happened to the pistol? He maybe threw it outside. Maybe somebody come along the next day and stole it. How do I know what happened to it? Charlie. There wasn't no pistol, was there? As far as you know, there wasn't even no fight. When I came out there, you was laying there on the floor where you'd been knocked, wasn't you? Well, no, I... Charlie, I fought Billy Barker. I fought Billy Barker. And he fell on his knife, and he died. And you was laying there on the floor all that time, out cold in the wedge, wasn't you, Charlie? Well, you... You trying to... Tell me I'm a liar? I thought he was my friend. They give me the reward, me, Charlie Connors. Why'd they give it to me? They give it to me because I deserved it, that's why. Tried to rob me and I stood up to him like a man. That's what happened. That's what happened, Sam. That's the gospel truth. You never run from nobody. I took Billy Barker. Why else would they give me the reward? You tell him, Horse. Why else? Because I told the sheriff to give it to you because you needed the money. Ne needed the, the money? Charlie Connors never needed no money. I've had deals all around here. You, you boys all know. You all know. for doing the right thing. Well, it looks like you're gonna have to give me back my $5. Yeah, it sure looks that way, don't it? Now, me, I'm real pleased the way things turned out. Scaring an old man ain't much sport, Cartwright. Now, you, I bet you don't scare. I've told you boys once, and I'll tell you again. Your brother's death was accidental. Sure. We'll be seeing you around, Cartwright. Why didn't you just shoot him and be done with it? I told you to wait, but you had to go ahead and do it your way. I'm sorry. I... Sorry? You know that this whole town is laughing at him? How do you think he's going to face him? Didn't you stop to think what you were doing to him? Think, Miss Annie. I thought about it all afternoon. I mean, it was his pride or his life. Charlie's pride is his life. Maybe you and me can help him get back some of that pride, but if he is dead, there ain't much we can do for him, is there? Where is he, anyhow? Nobody's seen him since he left the saloon. Well, come on, I'll let me find him. Don't need any more help from you. You've done enough already. Your horse is in the stable. You can pick him up whenever you're ready.
like a tomb in here. Where have you been all day, Charlie? I've been looking all over for you. Been here twice, been all around town. I wanted to be alone. Suppose you already heard what happened. I heard. How that hoss could turn on me. How he could tell the lies he told about me. Lie? You say he lied? Well, I've had enough for today. I don't want to talk about it. Maybe it's about time we began to tell the truth around here. Hoss didn't lie. He told the truth. What are you... Admit it! You didn't kill Billy Barker, did you? What are you trying to do to me? I'm trying to tell you that you don't need another man's courage. You have enough of your own. Lord knows you've lived through enough to kill a hundred gunfighters. And you've come through it good and sweet and generous. You don't need these big stories and these big deals. Just a lying fool, huh? No. Just a pretender. A man who doesn't think enough of himself to just be himself. Charlie, I love you for what you are. Don't you know that? I don't see how you can love me. We never had nothing. Always oh, want to get your big house and servants. <laughs> I, I never wanted no big house. I wouldn't know what to do with servants. What I have is enough. All the work you have to do. Charlie, we work together. We have each other. But sure. I guess there's people that have fine, easy lives. And then there's folks like us that do well just to hang on. But we've hung on together, Charlie. And I don't think we missed a thing. What do you want? I'm going to get the sheriff. Just behave yourself, old woman. We might not have to hurt him. Say, that's his horse, ain't it? He ain't going to walk home. He's got to come back here. Then we'll just be right here waiting for him. And we'll keep him over here and keep him quiet. I'm going to have a look around. Yeah, he'll be around. We got nothing but time. What are you going to do to him? That should be pretty clear, shouldn't it? Why don't you keep Stop. your mouth shut? We got you and your old woman sewed up tight. It's either going to be Cartwright or you two. So when he comes in here, don't you make a sound. Hear that? Yes, yes, yes. and toss it right over there, way over there. When I get through with you, big fella, you're going to be about three feet tall, and I'm going to cut you right in half. Oh, 
but you let them go, they, they ain't done nothing to you. Oh, no. No, sir. They're going to end up on this knife just like our brother Billy did. Besides, you ought to worry about them too much. You ought to worry about yourself, because you ain't got long to do that. I'm going to carve you like a big, fat hog, Cartwright. They'll kill you, Charlie. No, they won't. You all right? Yes. How's Charlie? Never felt better in my life. Oh, well, we sure done it, didn't we? Yeah, we sure did, Charlie. I reckon we can kind of turn it over to the sheriff now, though. Oh, Charlie, you were wonderful. Well, if that's what being a hero is, I'm never going to tell another story so long as I live. So help me. And it was. Roy can tell you. Two of the coldest killers ever to come west of the Cimarron. Out to carve me up with their knives because I disposed of their mad dog brother in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm not a killer at heart. Anybody here can tell you that. But when a man is looking at death, he has to rely on his animal instincts. I wasn't so worried about me. It was my friend, Hoss Cartwright. Oh! So it was Hoss you was worrying about, huh? I guess Hoss was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no laughing matter, my cynical young friend. Sure, Hoss is a strapping young feller. But he's muscle-bound. He was outnumbered. Well, them barkers had pistols and knives sticking out of every pocket they owned. So what did you do, Charlie? What did I do? <laughs> Give him the old Comanche war cry, and I jumped right down amongst them. No weapons, bare hands. <laughs> For a couple of minutes there, these old fists was busier than a windmill and a hurricane. Say, what was Hoss doing all this time anyway? Well, I told you, he was in danger. Charlie. Charlie, I was just fixing to take off, so I want to say so long. And I wanted to thank you for saving my life, Charlie. You're a courageous and brave man. And a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> There's the mark of a great man. Hoss Cartwright. Not afraid to step up and say thank you. I guess Charlie ain't never gonna change. And I wouldn't want him to. I don't blame you. Sort of like it myself. They haven't all been white men either. Some of the finest humans ever knew been red men. Yeah, that brings to mind a little altercation I had with Amos Many Wounds. Charlie, I never heard that one. Tell him about it. I'm going to. You remember him, Roy? Sure, Charlie. Tell him about it. Amos Many Wounds. Great chief of the kick You know, them, them anthropologist fellas said he was the finest specimen of Aboriginal manhood ever to come out of the plague. Well. Amos and I was jarsing around one day, and he challenged me to a wrestling match. Of course, he couldn't know that I'd been tutored by the first terrible Turk ever to step into the race. You all heard of him. Abdul the Bull Bull. 
Well, we didn't have no ring or nothing. Just went out there in the woods. Howdy, stranger. Howdy. You, uh... Where you heading? That's my business, mister. Well, I guess it's my business, too, seeing as how this is my property. This is your spread, huh? That's right. Well, I didn't mean to be short with you, mister. I've been riding a long way. I guess this dust is just... Dried out in my good nature. It's, uh, it's not too cold, but it's wet. Help yourself. Thanks. Appreciate it. This the way to Virginia City? Yeah, just over the hill you pick up the road. You come to the fork, you bear right. How far is it? Oh, but now it's right. That's about all me and my horse got left in us. You plan on staying in Virginia City? Yeah, I plan to stay there. As long as it takes me to get done what I've got to do. Didn't mean to be trespassing. That's all right. You rest your horse just as long as you want it. Good luck. Same to you, mister. I sing a song of pain and blood The ballad of the Ponderosa I sing of a man dead in the mud Neath the blood tree of the Ponderosa Doug Preston died in innocence Swinging broken against the skies not a word of truth for him was spoken. Oh, damn Ben Cartwright, damn his righteous Judge, you learn something new every day. Now, as long as we three have been having lunch together, this is the first time I knew our prosecuting attorney had a sense of humor. <laughs> right. Thank you, Martin. It looks like I'm going to need a sense of humor. If this town stays as peaceful as it has been, there won't be any need for a prosecuting attorney. <laughs> Don't worry, Dave. Maybe Ben or one of his boys can arrange to get into a little trouble, oh. and then you can become the public defender. Yeah, sure. <laughs> How soon before Roy Coffey gets back from his vacation? Oh, about a week or so. You know, I practically had to file out a warrant against him to get him to take this month off. <laughs> that old hard nose, he thinks Virginia City just can't get a longer day without him. <laughs> well, let's not tell him what a good job Jeopardy Sims has been doing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, entertainment at lunchtime. This town's getting more and more like San Francisco. Well, come on over here, young man. I see you made it without too much trouble. Yes, sir, I did. No trouble at all. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? Judge? Well, just about anything's all right with me. Well, in that case, I'll do a favor to mine. I sing a song of pain and hate Of a town full of death and lies Doug Preston was lynched cause they couldn't wait. Oh, damn Ben Cartwright, damn his righteous eyes. Frank Stanley was murdered on a lonely night. Ben Cartwright called the truth a lie. 
Doug Preston was the only one in sight. Dave Sinclair said he had to die. Judge Borman said with icy eyes, Doug Preston would not go free. No justice under frowning skies, just blood on the roots of the hanging tree. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I seem to have picked an unpopular tune. Who are you? Coulter's my name. Coulter Preston. Preston. That's a pretty famous name around here, ain't it? Boy, that was a long time ago. It's forgotten by now. Well, I ain't forgot it. You see, I'm Doug Preston's son. Y'all seem mighty interested in my song. How about you, Cartwright? You want to hear some more? I, I apologize, gentlemen. All right, young man, this is quite enough. I run this hotel and you're disturbing my guests. Wait a minute. Mr. Simpson. I think Mr. Sinclair. Judge Bowman and I would like to hear this young man out. Well, well, what do you know? All three together. The three men responsible for my father's death. I don't have to listen to this. That's right, Judge, you don't. Why don't you just lynch me like you did my pa? No one condones that lynching. But they still claimed he was guilty, and that's a lie. Another man killed Frank Stanley, and that man went free. While my father was lynched by a mob for a crime he didn't commit. Would an innocent man break jail before his trial was over? My father tried to get away because he knew he didn't have a chance with a so-called eyewitness and a hanging judge waiting for him. I'm sorry, Ben. I've had just about enough. That's all right, Judge. You just run along. But just remember, I'm going to keep singing that song. I got my rent paid up at this hotel, and there ain't no law against singing. Why are you doing this? Justice. And the memory of an innocent man. And don't you try and stop me. A guitar ain't no gun, and singing ain't no crime. Good day, gentlemen. Doug Preston ran to save his life. The innocent must be free. His frightened cry stopped late that night when they lynched him on the great blood tree. Frank Stanley was murdered on a lonely night. Ben Cartwright called the truth a lie. Doug Preston was the only one in sight. Dave Sinclair said he had to die. Judge Borman said with icy eyes, Doug Preston would not go free. What are you doing up here, Paul? Oh, thinking. Is something wrong? I don't know. Remember yesterday, I told you I met a young man out here when I was on the way back home? You mean the one with the guitar? Yeah. Yeah, the one with the guitar. That boy's Doug Preston's son. Yeah, Doug Preston, yeah? You he had a boy. He left here years ago. Yeah, he did. His aunt took him away right after his... right after his father died. But he's back. He's grown to be a very bitter young man. Oh, not that I can blame him after what he's been through. He believes his father was innocent. Uh, I guess it'd be pretty rough for any boy to accept the fact that his father was a murderer. It was a lot more than that, Joe. A whole lot more. 
He blames his father's death on Judge Borman, Dave Sinclair, and me. That don't make sense. You three didn't want anybody else trying to stop that lynching. I know. But there was a lynching. They think his father was innocent. Doesn't he know you saw his pa run out of the barn the night of the murder? He refuses to believe it. He won't believe the truth. There's nothing you can do. Well, I was thinking maybe there is. If one of you boys believed in something as strongly as he does, I sure hope there'd be someone that you could talk to about it. I think I'm going to ride into town and see if I can't get through to that boy somehow. I'll see you tonight. Be careful, Paul. Good evening, Mr. Cartwright. Simpson. Is the Preston boy in his room? No, he's not. He's he's probably still running around town singing that song and raising a fuss. He's been at it all day. I guarantee you, Mr. Cartwright, that I'll have him out of this hotel just as soon as he gets back. Why? Has he broken any laws? No, but... Did he uh, do any damage in the hotel? No, Mr. Cartwright. Chair. What happened to you, boy? Somebody jumped me in the alley. I'll get a doctor. Then you don't have any idea who beat you up, huh? All right, told you, Sheriff. It was too dark to see. Somebody hit me from behind and started working me over. Could have been anybody. I don't have very many friends in this town, Sheriff. You have any ideas, Ben? Well, boy's right. He doesn't have too many friends around here. He's caused an awful lot of unrest since coming, but I can't think of anybody who'd get angry enough to do this. I know somebody that'd be angry enough. Well, who's that? The man that murdered Frank Stanley. Oh, now, just a minute, boy. You ride into town and sing a ballad that makes a lot of loose charges and doesn't offer proof of one of them. Oh, come on, Sheriff. You think somebody beat me up just for practice? Uh-uh. I think somebody in this town thinks I'm getting pretty close to the truth, and they're trying to stop me. I waited 15 years to clear my father's name. The only way anybody's gonna stop me now is to kill me. There's a bitter young man, Ben. Yeah. Well, he has a right to be. Oh, that lynching was 15 years ago. It was wrong, the whole town knows that, but it's over and done with now. A boy's father would have hung anyway. He was guilty. Yeah, I guess he was. I, I should have thought so then. Well, but Ben, the evidence. Yeah, the evidence. Do me a favor. Ask Judge Borman and Dave Sinclair to meet me at the hotel. Well, it's awful late, Ben. Yeah, it is late. Maybe 15 years late. Gentlemen. Hey, Evening, Ben. Thank you for coming out so late at night. It's real friendly of you. Yeah, friend or no friend, it better be important, Ben. Well, I think it's important. Somebody beat up the Preston board tonight. As the sheriff told us. But frankly, I'm not surprised, Ben. The boy was looking for trouble. <laughs> it's only human nature, Ben. People don't want to be reminded of the lynching, so they, they strike out at whatever brings up the memory. That's one possibility. What's the other? Well, I got a... Maybe it's crazy, but... I got a strange notion that maybe... somebody's trying to keep the boy quiet to protect themselves. Judge, I'd like to go back over the trial records. But it was an open and shut case, Ben. You yourself saw Doug Preston come out of the barn after the killing. You had no doubts 15 years ago. I know I didn't. I know. But that boy was beaten up tonight. Judge, maybe we missed something at the trial. I think we owe it to ourselves and to the Preston boy to make sure that nothing is overlooked. Well, 
If you feel that strongly about it, Ben. I do. I do, Judge. I'll stay in town. We can start going over the records first thing in the morning, if that's all right with you. All right. Night, Ben. See you in the morning. Simpson, I'll be staying here the night. Could I have my usual room? Well, certainly, Mr. Cartwright. There you are, sir. I hope there's no trouble. Sure hope not. Right. Harold? What are you doing up this time of night? Mother couldn't sleep. She was sitting by the window. Saw you come in the hotel. She wanted to talk to you. About the Preston boy? Yes. Does she know who he is? No, but she heard him singing. Look, if you could just go upstairs and talk to her. Tell her everything's all right. I'm sure she could sleep then. No, sure. Mother, Ben Cartwright's with me. Ben! Thank you for coming to see me. Sit down. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I hear you've been a bad girl. You haven't been resting as much as you should. Oh, I will. I will. I just wanted to talk to an old friend for a few minutes. Uh, that's good to see you. Who is that boy? The one with the guitar. Who is he, Ben? Hmm. Just a boy with a guitar. No reason for you to bother about it. I keep telling her that, Mr. Cartwright. There's every reason. Doug Preston was hanged for the murder of my husband. Ben, who is that boy? Well, I seem determined to know about it. He's Doug Preston's son. Doug Preston's son. Yep. I guess the town forgot about that boy. Yes, I imagine most of the town did forget. You, uh, you heard him singing. He's convinced that, that his father didn't kill Frank. And uh, he's just come here to find whoever it was that did, if anybody else did. Do you think it was someone else? No, I find it hard to believe it was anybody else, but... <sighs> well, somebody beat up that boy tonight. Why? See what I've done by telling you? No, you've, you've helped by telling me. It's worse wondering and not knowing. One imagines so many things. Yeah, that's true. It sure is true. Now, Lisa, you get yourself a good night's rest. Thank you, Ben, I will. singing about the posse. I don't care if he is Preston's kid. It was a good posse. We did what we had to. I was in it. In fact, you were too, weren't you? Yeah, I was in it all right. Hey, you. 
We don't want to hear no more of your songs. As a matter of fact, we don't want you around here no more. You look at me when I'm talking to you. the son of a stinking murderer hanging around this town. Unnecessary now. What does that mean? The sheriff was in to see us a few minutes ago. He had to lock up the Preston boy last night. Seems he got into a fight in the saloon and did a pretty good job of smashing it up. Yeah, he couldn't pay the damages, so the sheriff's gonna let him cool off for a few hours and then escort him out of town. And that'll be good riddance. Well, whether the boy leaves or not, isn't gonna change anything for him or for us. We've got to make the boy see... See what? To see that the evidence is right? Van Preston was guilty as charged. We all agreed on that 15 years ago. Yes, Dave, we did agree. But maybe we were just a little anxious. If you remember, the man we were trying had already been executed. I'll go over to the sheriff's office and see what I can do for the boy. Meanwhile, will you fellas start going over the evidence? We've been doing that, Ben. We'll get back to it. Thank you. All right, boy. Your bail's been paid. You're free to go. Who paid it? Mr. Cartwright. Son, there's work for you to do and a place for you to stay if you want it. You're offering me a job? Why not? There's always room for an extra ranch and at the Ponderosa. And you look like you've been around cattle, son. You think I'd be fool enough to accept? I'd ride out to the Ponderosa with you. I might never ride back. Why don't you just let me lock him back up, Ben? Leave me alone with him for a bit, would you? Son. Son, I'd like to be a friend. And I reckon you don't believe that, do you? You're right, I don't. But you do want to know about your father, don't you? Whether he was guilty or innocent? I've got the judge and the prosecuting attorney working on the evidence just in case they missed something 15 years ago. You're doing that? I want the truth as much as you do. I don't believe you. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll go with you. But don't expect any thanks for what you're doing. This town still murdered my father. And you're part of this town. <laughs> He played the guitar much? Oh, yeah. All the time. We kind of miss it. You're welcome to use that one while you're here. Thanks a lot. I've never had one this good. Where'd you learn to play? Just picked it up. I used to listen to my father a lot when I was real young. He was a fine guitar player. Made up songs by the hour. 
You, uh, you seem to have the same gift. Oh, no. All my father's songs were happy songs. I bet you could make up a happy song if you tried. Well, there's one thing I'd have to find out first. What's that? What it's like to feel happy. Well, uh, look, you get yourself cleaned up. I'll see it somewhere. Uh, Hop Singh, that was delicious. You've outdone <laughs> yourself again. Young man, no light. He eat less than bird. It was fine. I just wasn't very hungry. Don't worry. Mr. Horse, he finish it all anyway. He only one who eat good. Hop Singh stand over hot stove all day. Nobody eat. Pretty soon now Hop Singh quit. You don't let him down. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, you said something about going over those records again. Yes, matter of fact, uh, Judge Borman and Dave Sinclair have been working on them all day. I'm going to join them tomorrow. I certainly would like to see those records. I think that'd be a very good idea. Tell you what, we'll go to town together first thing in the morning. Paul, oh, I was sort of figuring on going into town tomorrow anyhow. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, you can ask Dave Sinclair to bring out a copy of the records with him out to the ranch. Hey, I'll go with you so you don't get lost. Mm-mm. Huh? Plenty of work for you to do here tomorrow, and don't try to get out of it. Well, in that case, I think I'll turn in. I'll see you in the morning. I think I'll hit it too, Paul. Night. Night, Colter. Good night. Night, Holmes. I guess I better turn in too. I didn't get much sleep in that jail last night. Uh, Colter, there's something that I... I'd like to ask you. Don't quite know how to put it. Oh, I suppose the best way is flat out. Man to man. What has made you so sure all these years that your father was innocent? Because he told me. And my father wouldn't lie to me, Mr. Cartwright. He said he was innocent and I believed him deep in my heart. has to be wrong. Has to be. And that one is going to have to face the truth and accept it. Yeah, I know that, Mr. Carr. I know. What time do you think they'll be here, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, they will be here by now, around 11, I guess. That's really a nice piece. Hey, you've got a good eye, young fella. You know who gave me that? Sam Cole himself. That's a beauty. I've never seen a collection as nice as yours. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. It's an interesting piece. It's a Belgian blunderbuss. And uh, that middle one there, that, uh, those are two English carriage pistols. Those are buccaneers pistols up there. 
Yeah, the pirates used to stick them in their sashes. Oh, I think they're coming. <sighs> Up by accident. He only creased the side, but I think we'd better get him into the sea, Doc Martin. Get some hot water with you. You won't be able to lie your way out of it this time, Cartwright. He tried to kill me. Here, he tried to kill me. Hank? What happened? What's all the excitement? They got Ben Cartwright in there. He tried to kill that singer fella. Ben Cartwright? You heard me. The kid's accusing him of attempted murder. Hey, Hoss, wait a minute. What's going on? They lock him up, Joe. Look, boys, we can't say anything. It's... Well, we just asked a simple question. What's the difference of being the paper, won't it? It's in a paper you can read about it. I don't understand why you're getting so excited. I've already told you for the tenth time I'm not trying to keep anything from you. For 15 long years, I've sat at the window, Harold, watching the street down there. I've seen things that nobody else has ever seen. I know things about this town that nobody else will ever know. This afternoon, I saw Ben Cartwright and his two boys ride into town. With Doug Preston's boy and Dave Sinclair. I saw them go into the jail. But I didn't see Ben Cartwright come back out. Tell me, Harold. Well, do you know what the doctor said about you getting upset? Tell me, Harold. All right. Doug Preston's boys accused Ben Cartwright of trying to murder him. Thank you, Harold. I was just trying to spare you the upset. It'll all blow over. Yes, of course. Hey, don't you think you ought to go to bed now? No, no. You go on to your room. I just want to sit here for a while. was lost for 15 years Ben Cartwright wrote tall and free But now his sons will know my tears As their father swings from the hanging tree I sing a song of pain and blood die. Mr. Cartwright, you're going to die just like my father did. saying just because it's Ben Cartwright it couldn't happen? I didn't say it couldn't happen. I just said I don't think it did. Well, what the kid says makes a lot of sense to me. Ben beat him up to scare him off, and when that didn't work, he tried to shoot him. What do you think you are, the judge or something? I got a right to say what I think. 
Now, not everybody around here thinks the Cartwrights are as pure as you do. To get that big, you've got to tromp on somebody along the way, and that's a fact. Shh. How come he took the kid out to the ranch? Can you explain that? Hush up, will you? And then, Mr. Cartwright, you, uh, you not only posted bail for this boy, but you went even further and uh, invited him out to the ranch. Can you explain why you did this? Well, I... I felt badly for the boy. He was a, it seemed to me, a bitter young man who was destroying himself, I thought, because of a mistaken idea he'd been living with for 15 years. I didn't make any mistake. I've already proved what I came here to find out. Go on, Mr. Cartwright. I, I figured that I could get through Dakota. The truth was mine. Have him live with a family. Something which I guess he didn't have a chance to do before. Have people around him who... who weren't filled with hatred. You say, uh, have people around him. Your sons, is that what you mean? Yes, that was... that was my intent. Well, on the day in question, were your sons present? No, sir, they were not. Then um, you and Coulter Preston were alone to Ponderosa. Yes, sir, that's correct. He even sent little Joe on a wild goose chase to the other end of the ranch, and he sent Hoss into town on some kind of errand, and, and there wasn't even a hand on the place. Now, young man, you will remain quiet until you're questioned, or I shall instruct the deputy to remove you from the courtroom and hold you in contempt. Now, Mr. Cartwright... On the night of the previous assault, you admit then that, uh, that you were in town, that you were in the vicinity of the assault, and at exactly the time it happened. That's right. Then um, you could have been the man who gave Colter Preston a beating. If you're referring to the time and place Yes, I could have done it, but I didn't. But he could have. He's answered the question. Well, what kind of hearing is this? Are you just going to listen to what you want to hear? Is this the kind of trial you gave my father? Order! Order! Lisa. She insisted, Judge. I couldn't stop her. You don't miss a bit, do you, Cartwright? Bringing in the widow of the murdered man to get sympathy for you. Sit down. I have a right to have my say. What's the matter, Cartwright? Afraid of the truth? Did you see my father coming out of the barn that night, or did he see you? Deputy, you set this boy down in that chair. Isn't that a truth, Cartwright? Go ahead. All right, come on, boy. Come on, sit down. I'll sit down. I'll sit down. Sit down. If he gets up or opens his mouth again, take him out of here and lock him up. Doggone it, David. It just don't make sense. If Paul intended to shoot Colter, why'd he wait till me and you got there to see it? The witness will please answer the prosecutor's question. I repeat. As soon as we arrived, we heard a gunshot. We ran into the house. Ben Cartwright was there. Colter Preston was gripping his side. He'd been wounded by a gunshot. Well, Hoss. Speak up, Hoss. Wasn't that the way it was? Yeah, that's, that's right. You'll, you'll have to speak up so the court can hear. I say, yeah, yes, that's right. Your 
Honor. In view of the evidence, I ask that Ben Cartwright be charged with assault and battery, and with assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. Ben, if you have anything to say, if you have another line of defense, Ben, your only defense so far has been your conviction that the boy's lying. He is lying, Judge. He may not know he's lying, but he is. What happened? Please. Order! How can you be so sure, Lisa? Because my son and I have lived with a lie for 15 years. Well, I'm not going to let you do this. You'll let me, Harold. In a way, it'll be like getting out of prison. Should have been said 15 years ago. It should have been said the night my husband was killed. I was in the barn that night, Ben. That's what you didn't see. Doug Preston and I were in the barn and my husband came in. My husband was a violent man. You knew that, Ben. But for my sake, you, you tried to ignore it, but you knew it. There were other women, a lot of drinking. I was terrified what he might do to my son in one of his drunken rages. I needed someone that would understand. Give me sympathy. We didn't mean it to happen, but we fell in love with each other. We planned to run away together, take our two sons with us. She's lying! Deputy, listen, my father was taking me away with him. He would have told me if he had an interest in that woman. You're a liar, woman! Yeah. Frank began to suspect us. We were in the barn that night and Frank came in. There was a horrible argument. Doug Preston drew his gun and fired. No, that's not so! Doug ran out of the barn, that's when Ben saw him. I hid in the loft and I saw Ben come in and look down at my husband. Lying there dead. Doug was afraid. He was guilty and he was afraid. He told me he was going to try to break out of jail and I, I, I encouraged him. We'd meet someplace. I told him I'd take care of his son, Coulter. But he wanted the boy with him. If he hadn't stopped that night to pick up the boy, the posse might never have caught him. Don't lie, Calder. Please don't lie. Haven't enough life has been ruined by lies already. <gasps> Say for yourself now, Colter. did that too. I just beat my head against the wall, pretending I was beating my head against Ben Cartwright, beating the truth out of him. I had to know the truth. I had to know the truth. Well, you know it now. Charges against Ben Cartwright are dismissed. Court stands adjourned.
lied to me. He said that he was innocent. And if I hadn't really believed him, I wouldn't have caused anybody this much trouble, especially you. He lied to you because of his love for you. Forget the lie. Remember the love. That's what I remember. That's what I was trying to protect. said to me that he, he'd never sung a happy song because he didn't know how. Maybe he will now. Sure hope so. Let's go. Pretty rough on us in there, don't they, old man? Like I said, Mr. Cartwright, you'll buy yourself a whole new herd with what you earn on those shares. Well, I tell you, Mr. Feeling, I don't usually invest in gold mines. But I guess a little diversification is a pretty good thing now and then. Then shall we call it a deal? Yeah, it's a deal. <laughs> I got the certificates out of my safe and be back in a few minutes. All right, I'll be, uh, I'll be inside here. Whiskey, friend. Well, thank you, Ben. I think I'll just stay with the beer. Thank you. Oh, me. This is going to be a night. Are you, uh, you celebrating? A hard working man don't need nothing better than Saturday night for celebrating. <laughs> I think it's you're right. That there's gold dust. <laughs> Been having a run of luck in Downeyville. Yeah, so I understand. Mm -hmm. He's dudging mine a good shake, and the man could collect himself a fair stake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, half breed, bring me a beer. My boy has got a name. <laughs> I called him by his name. Half-breed. <laughs> Things get some nice shirts around here at times. Yeah, I can see that. Jenkins is my name. You a stranger in town? Well, I'm here in some business. I'll be leaving first thing in the morning. Stay clear of big Charlie Monaghan. He cheats them cards. Try to remember that. I ain't telling you no lie. I lost my first stake to big Charlie. 
clean down to my mule and my pickaxe. What's that here, then? Seems how you're a stranger in town and won't tell. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Huh? I'm gonna get things evened up. Old Jenkins is gonna get even with Big Charlie tonight. Oh, well, uh, why don't you hold off till morning? Things will look a whole lot different. I had this notion for a good long while. It's only good and I ever did have. And I'm going to get it off my mind tonight. <laughs> Somebody's got to show him. And I'm just the one that can do it. <laughs> I see you've met old Jenkins, Mr. Cartwright. Old Jenkins, uh... He sure was making some threats. Oh, Jenkins is always threatening to do something. He's always mad at somebody. He seemed pretty determined. <laughs> Folks in Downeyville don't take that old codger serious anymore. No reason why you should. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Feeling a little tired this morning? I done it, friend. You done what? Burned down Big Charlie's shack. Burned him out of everything he has. Burned it clean to the ground. Oh, made a grand blaze while it lasted. Uh, you know something, friend? The taste of ashes is bitter, isn't it? That's right. It ain't that he didn't deserve it. And there ain't a man in Donnyville that wouldn't like to see Big Charlie get done in. Do you realize what a terrible thing you've done? I do now. Well, what are you going to do about it? I, I just don't know. I reckon I'll have to own up to it. But then I'm scared if, if I do, he's going to knock me crosswise. Might have been a good idea if you'd thought of that last night. Where's this place you're talking about? It's just over on the other side of town there. What's left of it? A couple of miles. Well, I... I gotta be getting home. Friend. Would you... What I want? Well, I... I hate to go over here and face them all by myself alone. Would you... Make you feel better if I went with you? Would you? Well, you just wait right there. I gotta go round up Snowy Sue. <laughs> she got lost in the freakers last night. I gotta go. Find her. Snowy Sue! Don't fool you. Snowy Sue! Where is it? Where is it? Snowy Sue! Where is it? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good job, Come on. Done this, I'll kill him. So help me. I mean, was that miner you beat up in town, huh? No, nobody felt my fist had come near this place. They wouldn't dare. I don't know why I hang around this town anyway. There's a lot better places than this rotten hole. You ain't thinking of pulling out, are you, Pa? What's to keep me here? This? Yeah. This. And grave. Remember how it was when your mother was alive? We all tried to live fine, happy. Bother nobody. Remember how it was, Charlie, too? I remember, Pa. I loved your mother. She was a Shoshone. They wore her down with her insults and their hate and it killed her. That's why I've been stealing them blind ever since for what they've done to her. 
I remember Ma crying. Even her own people turned against her. Marrying a white man, me. So both white and Indian treated her like dirt. The way they treat you now. Well, I don't care about them. I don't need them. You don't need anybody. As long as you get the first jump. Because it's them that steals before they get robbed. And shoots before they get shot that survive in this world. You hear me, boy? I hear you, Pa. Well, you do the other fellow before he does you. That's what I've been trying to drum into you ever since your mother died. And don't you forget it. Pa, if, if you pull out, you ain't gonna leave me alone, are you? Oh, well, come along if you want it. I'll come with you, Pa. There ain't no reason why me and Big Charlie can't talk this out, is there? Uh, Charlie wants to talk. Look, I've been having a run of luck lately. I, I got more than enough to help him build a new shack. Well, why don't you tell him that right off? I aim to. Good. Ah, oh, come on. There's nothing left here we can use. Hey, Pop. Ah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Into town. I want the one who done this. Oh, right over there. I sure am much obliged to your friend for coming all this way out here with me. Much obliged to you. Well, uh, don't you want me to go the rest of the way? I gotta face up to him sometime alone. Well, you're gonna have to do that, all right. You sure you want to do it now? I'm sure. Come on, Snorri Sue, let's go. Yeah. He didn't even have a gun. So? He'd be just as dead if he had one. Just take that gun out real easy. Throw it over here. Don't you try anything, son. You killed him. Yeah. He came here to say that he was sorry for what he'd done. He said it? He wanted to pay you. We better get into town and see the sheriff. Oh, it's fine. He burnt me out. You killed him, and he didn't have a gun. Put him on his mule. Mister, you give me any trouble, I'll see you dead. Why don't you stay for the hanging, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, I've seen plenty of them in my time, Mr. Fielding. It's going to be a special day for Downeyville. You don't get to see a thing like this every day. Uh, are you sure now you can't stay on a bit? No, I got some stops to make before I get home. Well, this is our first legal hanging, you know. It's a far cry from the length of rope and a handy tree. Progress is what it is. You'll have real progress, Mr. Fielding, when there won't be any more need for hangings. When men stop settling the differences with guns. What about Monahan's son? Well, if he's got any sense, he'll go to his mother's tribe. 
think it's acceptable? Maybe, maybe not. But he never did fit in here. They don't cotton the Indians. Never was one you could trust. The boy get a chance here in Donnerville, Mr. Fielding? Well, folks don't want him here. That's not your problem, Mr. Cartwright. Son, not gassed. Leave us alone. You just got a couple of minutes. That'll be enough. I didn't know you were still around. No place else to go. Pa, I uh, wish I could have helped you the way you always done for me. It's too late for that now. Where you been sleeping, boy? Oh, I pitched camp down by the creek. There's no reason for you to hang around Downeyville any longer. I got some place for you to go after... after the hanging. Where's that, Pa? You're gonna do something for me, boy. You're gonna give me your word on it right now. What is it? Nobody. Nobody would ever found that Jenkins. Nobody would have missed him if it hadn't been for Cartwright. And you and me, we'd be free and running if it hadn't been for him. You're gonna get Ben Cartwright, Charlie, too. Well? You want me to kill him? Yes. I'm gonna die like a run chicken at the end of that rope. All on account of Ben Cartwright. And I won't die peaceful until you say you're gonna get him. I want to wipe him clean off the face of the earth. No man ever did wrong to a man I hadn't lived to tell of it. And you're going to see that it stays that way. You hear me, boy? Yes, Pa. And swear it. Take an oath, Charlie, too. Swear it. You hear me, boy? Swear it. On your father's grave, swear it. I swear it. Calvin, we appreciate your coming all the way out here. Oh, I had to see the marshal in Carson City. Wasn't any trouble stopping here. Well, we're glad you did. Charlie, too, will probably go off to join the Shoshones and never give a thought to his promise. But I thought your pa ought to know about it. Well, I better be on my way. Thank you, Jim. Charlie, well. Thanks again, Sheriff. Have a good trip. Thank you very much. What do you think, Joe? I don't know. It could be nothing. I think I'll ride to Downeyville by way out and see if I can't find Pa. What if you don't find him? 
Well, I'll see if I can track down this Charlie, too. Yeah. I'll go with you. No, no, you better stay here. Warn Pa in case I miss him. What happens if you find this Charlie, too? Then what? I don't know. All I know is there's a man somewhere with an oath to kill Ben Cartwright. I gotta find Pa before he does. Help me, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a fellow named Charlie Two. You know where he is? Charlie Two? You a friend of that half-breeds? I don't remember talking to you. Well, whether you remember or not, you're a friend of that dirty Indian. We don't want you around here. Then why don't you mind your own business? I think I will. <laughs> My pa's wages. There. That's all he had coming? That's right. What happened? He drew on me with my back turned. Fella shot first, saved my life. That right? You saw what happened, tell him. It's like he says. You did for me in there. Oh, that's all right. It's good practice. You didn't look like you needed any practice. You can really handle that gun. Yeah, well, I uh, hope you can handle one, too. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, if you stick around town much longer, that mine will be looking for you. Well, there's somebody I gotta find first. Good luck. Hey, sure. You, uh, you know a fellow named Charlie, too? The half-breed had just saved your life.
are you doing here? I saw you riding up ahead. If we're going in the same direction, I might like some company. Me? Yeah, why? I'm a half-breed. My name is Joe. They call me Charlie, too. I thought you said you were staying in Downeyville. Oh, yeah, I was, but uh, I felt I said I was looking for you. You'd already left. Big Charlie Monahan. I guess you never heard of him. Everybody in Downeyville knew him, though. Sounds like a pretty important man. Oh, he was important. One day in his life, the day they hanged him, he was my pa. I'm sorry. Raised me from the time I was a little kid. What happened to your mom? She died when I was a baby. I said of mine. Never even knew her. Are you heading out? Yep. Where are you going? Virginia City. Yeah, well, look, I live in Virginia City. Why don't we ride along together? Virginia City, huh? You know uh, Ben Cartwright? Yeah, yeah, I know. He's got a family? Mm hmm. Friends of yours? Yeah, yeah, they're real. Real good friends of mine. You don't pick the right kind of company. Well, I picked you, Charlie. Good to see you. How are things on the Fonderosa, Joe? Well, they're fine, just fine. Say hello to your pa and horse. Oh, yeah, I sure will do that. You take it easy now. It's starting to smell good. I'm hungry. How about you? <laughs> you sure talk a lot, Charlie. Oh, come from Salem City with a washbowl on my knee. Going to California, gold us for to see. What's the matter? You don't like my singing? Well, whenever I'm hungry, I sing. <laughs> and let's eat. I guess it's not too good anyway. Mmm, this is good. You know that ranch of ours I was telling you about? You'd really like it. It's, uh, it's kind of land a man can feel free in. So my pa saw it when he first started. I think you'd like my pa. We got, uh, got a lot of cattle, good grazing land. Real good fishing, great trout fishing. A lot of hard work, but a lot of fun along with it. What's the matter, don't you like my cooking? Where you going? Something I gotta do alone. Who are you gonna kill, Charlie? That's what it's all about, isn't it? You're riding into Virginia City alone. 
Gonna kill that Ben Cartwright, aren't you? What's that got to do with you? You saved my life. I'm trying to do the same for you. You're riding into a lot of trouble. There's no reason why we can't ride along together. Suit yourself. Here, Paul. You and me need to do some talking. Is the medicine they run? Oh, probably not, Paul. Look, just sit down and relax and let me get you a cup of coffee and I'll tell you all about it. Horses. This desert country is going to be pretty rough on them. Here. You're just gonna kill him, huh? How are you gonna go about it, Charlie? You're just gonna ride into Virginia City, ask for Ben Cartwright, and start shooting, huh? Maybe, maybe. What do I have to say to you? How do I make you listen to sense? Well, don't try. Just don't try, because we're on different sides. You don't understand me. Oh, come on. Stop feeling sorry for yourself because you're a half breed. No, no, you don't understand what it's like to have people laugh at you and make fun of you and call you names. To look in their eyes and see nothing but hate. You don't understand any of that. You're just like all the rest of them. Am I, Charlie? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, Charlie. I'm a white man. I'm a white man, Charlie. I don't know that kind of hate. But I know enough about hate to see it in your eyes. You want to kill a man. You don't care if you're right or you're wrong. You just want to kill him. What's the use? Just trying to make you see it, Charlie. I'm trying to make you see it because I want to be your friend. But you gotta give me a chance. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, we could sure use some water. Yeah. Uh, you can, you're welcome to anything you'd like, young fella. Just a pot of coffee in there. You and your friend here are welcome to a cup. I'm riding out to Virginia City. Charlie, why don't you, uh, why don't you go fill those canteens, huh? Got to get this horse reshod. Spade's coming in tomorrow. They're going to need him. Don't look around at me when I'm talking to you. My name is Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. The fellow I'm with is called Charlie Two. He's out to kill my father. When you get to Virginia City, I want you to warn the sheriff. You say something, young fella? Yeah, we're, uh... I'm much obliged for the water. Let's well, say we grab some of that coffee he was talking about. You were going to tell him to warn the cart rights, weren't you? Don't make no difference, Joe. Don't make no difference.
want your gun, Charlie. I gotta stop you. I've done everything I know how. See, the man you want to kill, Ben Cartwright, he's my father. All right, unbuckle your gun belt. Slow and easy and drop it on the ground. Tomahawk, too. Nice and easy. Joe should have been back by now. Oh, Paul, go easy on him. He just lost track of the time he's been gone, that's all. You know, he's always losing track of time. Should have more concern about the feelings of others. He could have sent a message. Maybe he will. Unless he can't. Unless he's some kind of trouble. Where? Where are you going? Well, maybe I'd ride down. Around Downeyville, he should be around there somewhere. Yeah, well, what if you run into Charlie, too? Well, if I run into him, I run into him. Look, Paul, he knows you. He ain't never seen me before. Why don't I go? Oh, so I'm a big boy now. I'll just find little Joan. We'll come on back home.
stay, stay right there. You get ready to draw. There's no way to settle anything, Charlie. Well, it's my way. Gun isn't gonna make any difference. Won't make up for anything. It'll, it'll make up for what you did to my pa. You saw your pa shoot an unarmed man. And if it wasn't for you, my pa'd still be alive. Well, maybe be alive. If it wasn't for the law. And if it wasn't for laws, maybe none of us would be alive. I don't want to hear any more. Now draw. Charlie! Joseph, stay out of this! Well, go ahead, Charlie. Shoot me. Go on, what are you waiting for? I haven't got a gun on. Well, go on, shoot me! You're big Charlie Monahan's kid. Prove you're a killer just like he was. Well, go ahead, shoot me! See you. See you. Just got back from Carson City. I stopped on the way in Donovan. Uh -huh. Sheriff Calvin told me what happened. I'm sorry. I understand you got the Monahan boy here. Oh, well, yeah. He's inside the house. Good. Well, take him off your hands. <laughs> what for, Clem? Uh, Sheriff Calvin told me that boy threatened your life. Now, that's true, isn't it? Sheriff Calvin told you that? I wonder why he'd tell you a thing like that. Joe, I'm doing fine. Good to see you. Uh, this, uh, this is Charlie, too. Charlie, too. Uh, Paul, me and Charlie are going to take a ride around the ranch. I want to show him some of the Ponderosa. Oh, good idea. Go on, son. Charlie, I'm going to show you a stream that's got the biggest trout in it you ever saw in your life. Oh, I come from Salem City with a washboard Joe. on my knee. Joe. And I'm... Huh? You uh, told me once you only sing when you're hungry, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go catch some of that trout and start eating fast. Mm. Oh, Ben. You got any plans for that boy? Well, he hasn't had any schooling, and I thought if he wanted to have an education, I'd see to it that he got one. Of course, he'll have to make his own plans. I, I'll just help out any which way I can. And then I guess he's going to be your responsibility. Yeah. You know, Clem, I guess in a way he has been. Ever since that day his father was hanged.
Well, that's game. Ben, that's game. That's two beers you owe me. Come on, how about another one? That young son of mine should have been back by now. Oh, boy, it's going to take him quite a spell around up all them horses. Well, it doesn't have to take this long, does it? Oh, Ben, quit being an old mother hen. You know little Joe can take care of himself. Here he comes now. Joe, what do you, what do you got that saddle roll around you for? Because I can't sit down. Why not? I got sh shot. Shot? Where? Right in the middle of the Ponderosa. Help, help me down. I'm here. Don't no, wait. Wait a minute. That's easy. 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 Don't hold. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, 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 no, no, who shot you, Joe? I don't know. Well, what happened? I was, I was running towards this fellow, see? Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Were you running backwards? No, I wasn't running backwards. A bullet ricocheted off a rock near Willow Creek. Well, just don't stand there. Do something. Like what? Like go after him. Go after who? The man that shot me. Well, who was he? I told you I don't know. Joseph, Joseph. Just calm down. Now. Let's calm try to make down. some sense out of this. Come on, sit down over there. Pa, pa I, I told you, I can't, I can't sit down, Pa. I can't sit. What's this? Whose hat is this? It's his hat. Whose hat? The man that, the man that shot me's hat. All right, hat. now quiet down, everybody. If a crime has been committed... If a like... crime has been committed. Did you hear that? If a crime has been committed. Now, hold everything, Joe. Just give me the facts, will you? Give me the facts. All right, here are, the here are the facts. I'm riding along, Pa. Peacefully. I'm riding along. I ride over a ridge. There I see a man lassoing one of our horses. I get off my horse and I start to go towards him. He shoots at me. I shoot at him. He shoots at me. I think I, think I hit him in the left shoulder. I, I know where he hit me. And I, I shot that hat off his head. <laughs> Seems like you fellas are playing a little game of heads and tails. His <laughs> name in here, Jay Reichman. Hmm. Does that mean anything to you? Never heard of him. What did he look like, Joe? I don't know. He's too, too far away. Well, I'll do some investigating as soon as I can. As soon as you can? How soon is that? Well, I don't know. I gotta meet Sheriff Coffee in Carson City tomorrow morning. I'm sorry, Joe. Well, look, if you if you're just gonna let murderers get away scot free, maybe we could use a new deputy around here. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Wait a minute. Could you send uh, the other deputy? Well, he's got the measles, Ben. Got the measles. I'm sorry, I can't do anything right now. Well, could you deputize somebody else? Well, like who? Give it a try, Hoss. That's all right, brother. Forget it. Forget it. Let the man who tried to murder your brother, your own brother, your own flesh and blood, let him ride away. Let him get away, Scott Free. Forget I asked you. I'll swear you in. Do you? I do. You are. I think I'll uh, go in the house and soak, soak my feet. Howdy. Nice weather we're having, huh? I'm looking for a fellow by the name of Reitman, Jay Reitman. You ever hear of him? Nope. Thanks. Welcome.
Can't trust a man Charlie don't like. I reckon this is Charlie, huh? That's Charlie. Well, maybe he just don't know me. Uh -huh. Neither do we. Yeah, name's Cartwright. Horse Cartwright. Ponderosa Cartwrights? That's right. Maybe wrong. What you doing on our patch of land? I'm uh, looking for a fellow by the name of Reichman. Well, I can open, fellas. Which Reichman? Just Jay Reichman's all I know. You a friend of his? No, uh, as a matter of fact, I ain't never seen him. I'm, I'm a special deputy. I just want to ask him some questions. Aiming to arrest him? Well, that, that sort of depends. So, uh, well, you don't know Reichman, huh? No, I ain't got much of a description of him, neither. Well, <laughs> maybe we can uh, help him out, huh, boys? I'd appreciate that. Well, Reichman has got two heads, each one of them meaner than the other one. Got four arms that move like sidewinders and four legs that stomp like mules. Uses a wagon tongue for a toothpick and he can shoot a bumblebee in a behind at 400 yards. Just a ordinary sort of fellow then, huh? Might say that. You've been a big help. Thanks. Welcome. in the hills, we got a lot of wild hogs. Wild hogs got big noses. Sometimes they put their noses in the wrong place. And when they do, they get bit. I can see that news travels fast around here. Yeah, well, especially bad news. Meaning what? Meaning don't be a hog. Hey, we don't allow no dogs around here. He ain't mine. <laughs> I wasn't talking about him. You know, this is really and truly a nice, friendly little town. Yes, sir. I've been here 20 minutes. And in those 20 minutes, I've been snapped at, snipped at, and snarled at. And I got a funny feeling that if 
I hang around much longer, I'm liable to get shot at. I came into this town looking for a feller I'd never seen before named Jay Reichman. Know very little about him. One thing, he likes to shoot at fellers. Another thing is he likes to freeload on other people's brood mares. I got another funny feeling. I got a funny feeling I just found him. Put your gun up there on the bar and slide it down. Move. You too, buddy. On the bar. What's your name? Reichman. J. Your name, not your initial. J for Jeb. Yours? <laughs> Judd. Well, looks like I hit the jackpot, don't it, boys? I didn't know your can came in bunches, but if there's a dozen of you, I'm going to take you back to Virginia City and you're going to stay on trial. Virginia City? Oh, that's about 800 miles from here. I haven't been out of town half a mile in a year. Me neither. That's good. You can tell it to the judge. And now, wait a minute. I don't see any sense in that. Judge just told you you hadn't been with miles of that place. And I told you the same thing. Now, it seems to me that's about the end of it. Besides, nobody got killed, did they? That's right. Nobody did get killed, but how did you know that? Oh, he wasn't telling you. He was just asking. Well, well from now on, I'm going to do the asking. And you boys are going to do the answering. Now, let's get over and see the sheriff. I'm sure you've had occasion to meet him several times. Uh, now, just a minute. You got any proof of what you've been saying? I got all the proof I need, buddy. Now, get moving. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like your percentage is gone. Got a nice even fight right here. Ain't you fellas a little bit young for all this rough stuff? Yeah, but you see, we we're gonna get older and you mightn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, how you want it? For uh, keeps or for fun? All right. All right. <laughs> I'm getting just about sick and tired of this town, and you. And that goes for you, too, Charlie. And all this talk. Now, come on. Second time this month, this place has been busted up. Now, don't we always clean it up for you? Give me a gun. 
All right, you do get. We're just getting our irons, Ma. Ma'am, I sure would like they to. They won't go far. Well, they're all heated up. There'd just be more trouble. You, uh, you ought to relax some yourself. Now, just cool off. Hey, let me see Fat Joe's gun. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Be a real little man now, huh? You look like a real nice man. What I can see of you, what are you doing picking on those two little boys? Two little boys? Ha! That's a laugh. Meaner than a couple of wild bulls, those two little boys, as you call them. This is a real small town, and they are young, and maybe there ain't too much excitement around here for them. Uh, they work for you? Well, that's a hard question. Sometimes I don't know whether they work for me, I work for them. I guess it's a little bit of both. I'm their mother. Ma'am, I hate to tell you this, but one of your boys is guilty of attempt horse theft and assault with a deadly weapon. Well, you got, uh, you got positive proof that one of my boys did what you say? No, well, ma'am, I ain't got proof positive, but there's lots of circumstantial evidence. Any horses took? No, ma'am. Any money took? No. Anybody got shot? Yeah. Yeah, somebody got shot. My little brother got shot. That's who got shot. Where is he shot? Well, he shot in the... He was shot where the person meets the saddle. Well, that don't sound too serious to me. Well, how'd you like to get shot in the... Ain't your brother all right now? Well, he can't sit down. Well, you know... You look like a real reasonable young man. And on the basis of what you have just told me, mister, you can go shinny up a gum tree. You think I'm gonna turn over one of my boys to you or to anybody else? You are wrong. Mister, your case is a bottle short. Uh, Mel, why don't we let the court decide that? Strange court in a strange town. But the judge scratching the sheriff's back and the sheriff scratching the judge's back. They're both up for election, and the local people are breathing down their necks. Man, would have a fine chance in a court like that. Besides, in my opinion, just ain't much of a crime. My boys are young, and they're feisty, and they're a little bit rougher than most, but they ain't criminals. The meeting's now adjourned. Ma'am, may I just suggest that they, they try to clear themselves? Is your brother a young fella? Yes, sir. He's got lots of time to sit down. Freddy, you seen my gun? Here. Ah, very good. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> I poked into that lady while ago and knocked off. Trust a man that Charlie don't like. Pretty lively little ruckus over there. Saw most of it from here. Didn't go over though. Can't stand the sight of blood. Chaw? No, thanks. You ought to. I've been chawing since I was seven. 
Tobacco kills germs so as your gums don't rot. Are you in uh, some sort of trouble? Nope. Just doing my job. I'm in town to pick up a fellow by the name of Reitman. Well, then you are in trouble. Which one you after, Jeb or Judd? Well, there's sort of a problem there. I, I don't know which one I'm after. Well, whoever it is you want, whatever was it he did. Well, he tried to steal a horse and he shot a man. Kill him? Too bad. Could have used the business. You sheriff? Nope. Just a special deputy that's sent in the town to pick up Reichman and take him back to stay on trial, that's all. And you can't figure out which one you want. That about it? That's about it. Well, that is a problem. All right, all right. Now, the Reichman boys, they ain't killers. Of course, there ain't a hen house in town, they ain't thieved. And... <laughs> Neighbors all grease their pigs when they see the Reichman boys coming. Maybe they steal just out of plain cussedness. They ain't never thieved a bank or shot anybody or anything important like that. They're just trying to be real outlaws and just can't seem to make it. Yeah. Give them time. You might be right. They're mean enough for anything. <laughs> yeah, but Willie May, she keeps them both of them on a right short reign. <laughs> Yeah, quite a woman, Willie May. Yeah. You sure you don't want a chaw? Oh, you ought to have a chaw. Hardens up the jaw muscles. Could you tell me where the sheriff's office is at? Well, half the time it's in the jail, and the other half the time it's in the saloon. Now, if he ain't in the jail, he's drunk. If he ain't in the saloon, he's broke. Well, now, he ain't in the saloon, so he must be in the jail. It's down the street. Thanks. It won't do you much good, though. <laughs> Sheriff, he's a real character. He ain't normal like the rest of us folks here. And putting him in charge of the hoose is like putting the fox in charge of the chickens. <laughs> he likes his liquor, ain't shot his gun in five years, except maybe to chase off a few crows, and he's yellower than a dry cornstalk. Otherwise, he's a he's a pretty nice fella. <laughs> you sure you don't want a chaw? No, thanks. Have it your own way. Now, you uh, you need any business, though, you call on me. Uh, I shave him cleaner and keener and bury him deeper and cheaper. Thanks. Welcome. <laughs> Sheriff? I guess I am. What's on your mind? Well, I... I got sort of a problem. You got a problem? I got sciatica, my wife's got the croup, and I ain't been paid in four months. And you got a problem. <laughs> well, let's have it. Well, I... I've been deputized to come here and pick up a man for questioning. Questioning for what? For horse thieving and... Shooting at a man. Who do you claim shot him? A fellow by the name of Reichman. Just one man named Reichman? That's right. Well, now, that's different. We got two Reichmans here. Which one was it? I, I don't know. He don't know. What do you think of that, Skinny? When you find out, Come back. If I do, will I get a warrant? No. Why not? Until I get paid my wages, I don't do nothing. Well, I reckon that sort of leaves me on my own, don't it? And good luck to you. Oh, uh, if there's any shooting, don't expect me to come a-running. No. Don't worry. I won't. And by the way, you get this varmint off my back, or Pop goes a weasel. Thanks. Well, 
Falcon. You still in town? Yeah. You know, Freddie, a peculiar thing about this town. You look at it from a distance, and it's as pretty as a wildflower. But you get in close and take a good look at it, and it takes on the appearance of a cactus. It's thorny, sticky, and poisonous. You talk real pretty. Yeah. Freddie, maybe you can talk pretty. I need some information. Sorry, we just plumb ran out of information. Freddie. Where do the Ragman boys hang out? Look, like I said, we're fresh out of information, but we just got in a big supply of advice. You're too nosy for your own. Uh, don't hit me, mister. Don't you hit me. I'm a sick man. Yeah. Yep, we sure are at that. That's using your head, young fella. Too many people using their fists around here. Now, how about a touch? Might ease your temper. No, thanks. Well, it tastes like formaldehyde. Why do you drink it? It's all you've got. You talk to the sheriff? Yep. Was I right? Right as rain. And I guess you'll saddle up and trot on home, huh? No, sir. No, sir. I came here to do a job, and I'm going to do it. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. You know... I still think it was the Reichman stole them bronze handles off that coffin I had sent up here for old Colonel Atchison. Well, they might act a little rough at times, but they're local boys and they're good customers. I wish there was customers of mine. Well, good luck. Maybe them Reichmans will get buggy whipped after all. Well, you can't fish a stream that's dry. I ain't been able to locate them. No line on them, huh? <sighs> nope. This town's full of advice, but... Dang little information. Well, I'll tell you now. You go out that door, you ride south for a mile and a half, turn left at Superstition Fork for a half mile, and you'll see what looks like an overgrown outhouse standing there mean and nasty behind a stand of wild oaks. There's also a rickety barn filled with stolen saddles and, and probably a rebranded steer, too. Uh, there's no telling what or who you might find out there. Are you sure you won't have a touch just to get you going? No, thanks. Well, uh, if anybody should turn up dead, and I hope it ain't you, uh, I'd appreciate the business. I know. Cheaper and deeper, right? Yeah. Thanks. Welcome. expect to be a deputy around here, you'd better settle down, boy. Thank you. 
Cat, burn it, quit playing games and cut me down here, you two jackasses. There. Hey, 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 let me down here. Just visiting, ma'am. Just visiting. No, Ma, he was trespassing. We got a right to do whatever. Up. Now, you have been butting these two little boys around like a billy goat, and you've been making serious charges. Now, let's just quit all this butting around and have a showdown right now. Well, that suits me fine, ma'am. That's fair enough. Oh, come on, Ma. Just let me, let me just hit him once. Shut up. Let him down. <laughs> something and they claim that they they didn't somebody's lying i stand with my boys now you are on trial here not them well ma'am it appears that these little boys of yours are closer than a couple of buckwheats but one of them well i heard all that before uh you got any evidence yes i sure do i didn't come all this way without some evidence bet on that this happened this happened Found at the scene of the crime, Exhibit A, Your Honor. Well, all it is is a hat with a hole in it. Mm hmm. And with a name in it, J. Reichman. Jeb, you lose a hat? No, ma'am. Chuck? No, ma'am. Ma'am, that hat is pretty damaging evidence. Well, somebody could have stole it. Well, when did all this take place? Two days ago, Tuesday. Jeff, where were you on Tuesday? Well, it seems to me I was back in the barn all day, uh, soaping up some saddles. Judd? Hmm. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, I, I think I was in town uh, fighting Roger Jones. Oh, that was Monday I fought Raj. Well, you better do some remembering. Yeah. I know where I was. I, I was down near the creek chasing some stray sheep. Well, you know that we don't own no sheep. Yeah, but I figure it's about time we did. I mean, well, pickings get pretty lean around here at times, Ma. Ma? Now, this is the third or fourth time that I told you. Maybe we'll starve, but we'll starve honest. I did it for you, Ma. I suppose you shot that man for me, too. Oh, Ma, I said I didn't. I asked Jeb. I had my hat on, too, didn't I, Jeb? Well. Now, son, I want the truth. To be fair, Judd, I... I remember seeing you all right, like like when you come in the bar and all tuckered out and kind of breathing hard and. Yeah, yeah, but that was that was from no, that was from chasing that sheep, Jeb. Now it was. But, but what I don't remember is. I don't remember. Did you have your hat on? Oh, now, Jim, Jim, please, you got to remember. Now I might have taken my hat off later or something, but I had it when I came back. I had it on. I think hard, son, and I don't want you to lie. Did he have his hat on or not? Well. well uh... I hate to do this to you, Judd, but I have to tell the truth. Ma, well, I don't think he did. Jeff. Well, take him away. I, uh, 
tried to raise him decent. I, I, uh, I did my best. But I guess when all you got is a piece of scrub ground and no husband. I'm sorry, ma'am. I am. What'll happen to him? Well, ain't nothing gonna happen to him because he ain't going. You put that gun away. No, Ma. Listen, I didn't try to steal that horse, and I, I didn't gun that man neither. Now, Jeff, you stay here and you help Ma, because I'm leaving. Now, you do like I say. If you're not guilty, like you claim, nothing is going to happen to you. But if you run off, I swear to you, you'll never be welcome in our land again. He's too young, or like he's too old. I don't know. All right, mister, he's yours. Ma'am, as it turns out, he's not the one I want. What happened to that arm, Jeb? Well, uh, just a scratch. Um, scratched on a tree. It looks like a bullet wound to me. It's a burn. My little brother said he might have winged him in the left arm. Jeb? Well, all right. I shot him, but I didn't mean to. I was just trying to scare him off. About that mare, Ma, I just figured we could use her. Yeah, I know you did it for me. But you let your own brother. No, I wasn't going to let him down. I was going to chase him along behind, behind the trail, you know. And then I was going to bushwhack him. Judd, you believe that? No, Ma. You try to lay the blame on me, huh? You try to lay... Hey, boys! Hey, boys! Oh, let them be! Oh, it's okay. Are you gonna take one of my boys away and I don't even know your name? Cartwright, man. Paul Cartwright. Ponderosa Cartwright? Yes, sir. That's it. Want a drink? Oh, right? Yes, sir. I'd like one. Thank you. Here, your Paul's a real fine man. Well, we think so. Yeah, you're lucky. You're real lucky to have a paw like Ben Cartwright. Got them all? No. Every boy ought to have them all. But if he had his choice, I reckon every boy would rather have a paw. <clears throat> It is real hard raising a couple of wild buffaloes. You know, a boy needs a man to teach him how to hunt and fish and work and ride and be a man instead of an animal. Yeah. Girl, it's different. Ma'am, don't you think oh, I ought to... No, 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 they... That happens all the time. You know, my husband, bless him... He had a real quick temper, just like them, and he had a hard fist and a dry throat, but he never drew a gun on a man in his life, and I sure do hate to see one of my boys starting. You know, maybe it's a good thing that this thing happened now. Make your mistakes when you're young enough to fix them. What'll happen to him? Well, Ma'am, I don't know what the what the penalty is for shooting a man in the well, where he where his person meets the saddle. <laughs> yeah, they wasn't no horse stolen, and, and the shooting was accidental. My little brother said that. So maybe they won't do nothing more than just find him. Well, I just hope it's a little one. We just spent our last four dollars on books. I. I was hoping that I could teach him how to read. Yeah. <laughs> oh. 
You know, Hoss, that is the first time that Judd ever whipped Jeb. Well, maybe that's because he knew he was right, ma'am. Son, here's something for you and Foss to eat on the road. Well, we better get on the way. It's going to be dark for long. You mad at me, are you, Jen? No, Jim. Bye, Ma. Y'all take good care of her now. We'll be waiting for you, son. I hated to make such a nuisance of myself, Miss Ragman. You've been mighty cooperative. Thanks. You know, if we'd been in a real gunfight, you'd have been in a whole lot of trouble. Well? How's that? Well, why don't you just take out your gun and shoot at something? Shoot at what? Oh, anything. Like that? Uh, but I, I put the. Well, I reckon you must have fixed it. Yeah, I did that, Jim. Let me tell you something, boy. I don't wear this gun in a pair of diapers. I check it and I clean it every night. A gun can either be your best friend or your worst enemy, and don't you forget it. You got to learn to respect them, Jim. That's one thing among many you've got yet to learn. Yeah, I know. Boy, there's a whole mess of things I gotta learn. Yeah. You know, nobody in our family ever been in jail before. Like my pa, I... I never shot anybody in my life. See, I shot towards your brother, not at him. I was scared, I guess. Must have been Ricochet got him. Well, I'm sure glad he ain't hurt bad. Funny thing is, one gets hurt the most is Ma. She always tried so hard to do good with me and Judd. You know, Jeb, that was a dead burn fool thing I just done. Shooting up your hat. The only evidence I got. We can't have much of a case against you without it, can we? Well, I reckon that, but one thing to do, and that's let you go. You get on back to your ma, boy. But I want you to remember this. If you ever do anything to hurt your ma again, boy, I'll come after you personally, and you'll have to answer to me. You remember that. Now get. See you back. Howdy, Paul. Joe. Well, uh, how'd it go? Did you, you find him? Well, in a way. What do you mean, in a way? Well, I mean, I found him, but he got away. That's what I mean. How come? Well, he... He was big, boy, and mean. Oh, so I... I just don't think you were cut out to be a lawman. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon I wasn't at that, Paul. But I'll tell you, I learned something. I learned to be grateful. For what? To you, for being such a good Paul. To Joe and me and Adam. Teaching us how to hunt and fish and ride and work and just stuff like that. Just. Everything in general. Just grateful. Anything wrong with that? No. No, there isn't. 
Oh, I, I want you to know how grateful I am to you for what a wonderful job you've done for me. Thanks.
Thêm nào thì chiều à, Mình đã hoàn thành xong bức tranh một cành hoa gồm có hai bông hoa Mình đã tô hai bông hoa này màu vàng nhạt rất là đẹp mắt Và chiếc lá màu xanh lá cây Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết video này của mình và đừng quên ấn like subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình nhé Xin chào mọi người và hẹn gặp lại mọi người trong những video lần sau